Hi guys, welcome to One UX One. We're covering lesson one of UX design and UX research, all the terminology, everything you need to know to get the job that you require. So the first one is text input. Now text input is really crucial to UX design. Why? Because you need to have the right question, the right terminology, i.e. the content writing, the copywriting needs to be correct, i.e. users can easily understand the messaging, the size of this heading needs to be right, whether you want to use bold or you want to use a regular font. And this box here, are you going to use black or gray? And that depends on your website or your app design and what the user needs are. So you need to see if accessibility wise, it works for people with you know, visual impairments and issues like that. So really, when it comes to text input, it's good to test and see what design will work best for your users. The next one is UX design process. You must know the UX design process off by heart. So if I ask you now, what's the UX design process? You need to know it because it's gonna come up in job interviews. It's going to come up in your daily working with your colleagues. So an easy way to remember UX design process is to remember the, the first letter of each part of the process. I create an acronym, U-R-A-D-L-A. -A. That's one way. Or you can Google and search any of the UX design processes and there's no wrong or right answer. There are so many and they're all correct because there's no one defined way. So you choose one that you like, the one that you can understand and go with that one and that will be your UX design process. The next one is placeholder text. Now if you see in the red circle here, placeholder text is dummy text you use whilst you're designing because you haven't really finalized what the wording is going to be. You might have a content writer who's going to write that for you. It might be you yourself doing that. But a placeholder text allows you to continue with the design. So you just write any dummy text and that allows you to start iterating and designing, improving the design whilst you decide on what these answers are going to be what the questions are going to be, is a very helpful way of working. The next one is accordions. Now accordions allow you to put lots of information, lots of options for the users into a limited space. And it's a space saver, but they say it's not very good for SEO, search engine optimization, i.e. these things are not easy to find. Bots don't find it for your website, i.e. it's searchability. But in terms of user experience, it can be really helpful because here you just expand and collapse and it allows users to see more options. This is the triangle design, the upside down triangle. Now this is not as good, I think, in my experience as compared to this type of accordion where you have a plus sign. And the plus sign is higher affordance, i.e. it's easier to see, more prominent, and it, it really invites you to click it. So in terms of design, I'd go with the plus sign rather than this one, but it's really up to you. And your user research will tell you which one is the right option. The next one is naming conventions. Naming conventions are about labeling things in the correct way for you and your design team when you work together. For example, you normally have a shared drive like a OneDrive, a G drive, or some kind of online database or sharing file sharing software like SharePoint or Amazon Web Services. Now, when you start to do your work in UX design or UX research, you're going to create folders and those folders are accessible to your colleagues. Now, if they're not conventionally labeled, i.e. not logically labeled and numbered, everyone's gonna find it frustrating to find the files that they need. It may be a wireframe you designed, it may be a research uh, report. So labeling it 01, 02, 03 can be really helpful. And exactly what it does, what is the folder for, what is in the folder, so login page, onboarding, homepage, shopping, category, whatever it might be, a checkout page, you decide, but label it in a convention that everyone can understand, especially developers, they get quite frustrated if they're looking for a wireframe. Let's say you're off sick, you're not at work, they need to find it, it needs to be easy for them to be able to find it. So I hope that was useful, guys. This is UX 101, going through every lesson to help you know all the terminology, everything you need to know about UX design to get your first job. I'll see you on the next one, One UX One.